Welcome, Scrollgers, to another episode of Scrolls Top 5 Plays of the Week. Remember to send in your top plays to nerfninja at gmail.com to be featured in this series and win some extra gold. Without further ado, here are this week's top 5 plays. Leading off is not so much of a top play, but more of something I want to show you guys. I'm nearing the end of a match versus King Kiwi, and as you can tell, things are not going well for me. After a watch again, I'm left with a one health idol and almost a cleared board, and King Kiwi has Darklings and removal. King Kiwi makes a fatal mistake of leaving that idol open with only one husk in front of it, and I have the scrolls to punish him. I need to clear out that husk though, and I have a burn to do so, but the watcher will deal 2 damage to one of my idols because it's dying from non-combat damage. So I'm praying, and here it comes. The 2 damage hits the middle idol and I lose. It was a misplay by King Kiwi, but his watcher took the top play for saving his butt. At number 4 is a play by Maester in a match versus Colorplant. Maester asks Colorplant to not move down very nicely because nobody wants to face a Solemn Giant and Athea about to attack. Colorplant disregards Maester's plea and moves down with an Elder for protection. Colorplant fell for the trap. He spawns a wolf, plays a Noadi, and then moves up and plays an End of Reason. He took down arguably the three strongest energy creatures and didn't give up much on his end. A value end of reason by my Esther. Number three is in a match between Sinner's Dread and Franconi, but it's Franconi's board which is dreadful, with nothing on it. But he plays a Frost Scale, followed by a Quake to almost clear the board for a quick turnaround. His idols were at a pretty low health too, so it's really awesome that Franconi was able to get those spells out in the nick of time. He even plays another frost scale for the complete board clear. He used the frost scale before the quake because he wanted to make sure the rot eater would die. Following the board clear, Franconi was able to win in just four turns, the series of god hands. Number 2 is in Game 3, the rubber game of the 5 game set of the King of the Beta Tournament Finals between PewQ and Ghost Bomb. It looks like PewQ pulls ahead with that Necrogun, and Ghost Bomb won't have an opportunity to win. It's a board clear, and the Aroa gives him some extra ramp. Pew Pew can likely win the next turn with another Necrogeddon. Ghost Bomb searches for scrolls, and did he draw the correct three scrolls? A Copper Automaton Iron Whip Machinator gives a hasted 10 damage for the win on the bottom idol. What a surprising victory, where Ghost Bomb pulled ahead in the series. Number 1 is in Game 5 of the same series. This match was for all the marbles, who would become King of the Beta. Ghost Bomb is using Mono Energy Structures versus PewQ's late game growth. The game looks good for Ghost Bomb because he seems to have control of the board, and he's only 2 damage on an idol away from winning. The play begins with a Ragged Wolf spawn from a Brother of the Wolf. That's another wolf to raise each great wolf's attack by one. He maneuvers his units around and plays a brave, and then follows it up with a ragged wolf, moves his brother the wolf down with a god hand. That, my friends, is lethal. A huge play by PewQ to take the surprise win, and if there was any doubt that PewQ wasn't already the best player in scrolls, this confirmed that. 
QQ1 King of the Beta, and congratulations to him. Thank you for watching, like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you next time.